Oh, there we go. That's better. Yes, I can hear now. How are you, Betty? I am excellent. I can't believe this works so easily. I'm always so afraid. Technology is, is not my strong suit. And I'm always like, oh, it's not going to work. But it did. Spirits are with us. So. <laughs> well, it's so nice. How are you guys? Yeah, we are, we are, we are doing good. Like, uh, it's some things are a little bit shitty right now, but uh, I think we, we, are, we are one of the lucky ones. We are healthy. Everything is going okay. So, um, yeah. Good. Yeah, it's a weird time for everybody, and that's what we do with it. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little stir crazy, want to get out of the house more, but I'm good. Spirits are active too. Have you guys noticed that? It's Spirits are a little chaotic time for spirituality i must say like things are yes. changing it definitely for, yeah so it's a big Not reset <laughs> with ghosts so yeah so okay we want to talk with you about art and the paranormal because we think yeah. that uh, there's a huge uh, similarity between the two like there is um the words that we use for describing the paranormal are often also used for describing art. And um, so maybe we want to ask you, for you, what is the difference actually between magic and art? Well, not very much different. Um, I, again, I am definitely live in the world of paranormal and I'm also live in the world of art. I've always been an artist of sorts, not a fine artist, but, but a dancer, performer. I'm on the board of the Hollywood Arts Council. To me, they're one and the same because I, I do, in my work, I talk very much of your left brain, your right brain. You know, your left is your reasoning, rational, one plus one equals two brain. There's not a lot of art there. There's not a lot of paranormal there. There's not a lot of spirituality there. Your right brain is your artist brain, is your spiritual brain, is your uh, paranormal brain. That's where you're going to see ghosts, talk to spirits. And anybody who's drawn to that, it's, it's the same. It's, it is the same thing. That, to, a great analogy you say that they use the same words they do and i love it when people have i think it's completely unconsciously the people who are into the paranormal and drawn to spirituality have an artist's brain of some sort artists themselves whether they deal with the paranormal or say they do are often guided by spirit or other forces whether they know it or not and there's some beautiful artists who know that they are that so there's some paranormal artists out there um like Susan Hiller, she died last year. She oh, yeah. really did paranormal art, you know, or uh, Fernando Orlando. There's a few different people that's great. So it's it's that creative brain. It's that right brain. It's the magic. Interesting, though, that you mentioned, like, uh, the brain. Because um, you could also think, like, do you think that also paranormal skills, just like when you have artistic skills, that they are they are actually located inside your brain? Well, I think it's the side of your, I don't, that's a good question. I don't know if they're located inside your brain. I think it's part of the whole energy of it. But I think that is the side of the brain where you can access it. Like third eye, head right, third eye, head right. Yeah. People who don't have a big creative brain have a lot harder time who are so logical. They're not going to believe there's a ghost behind them. So logical, they're not going to see the beauty in a painting or a dance. No. It, it, it's just, that's where it's access. I don't know if it really lives there, though. I love that. <laughs> I like what you're saying, that, the, like, the logical thing is actually something that blocks our creativity, that also blocks our, 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 blocks our spirituality. I think that's really interesting. I think this time where, especially in, like, the West, like, uh, America, Europe, we are so focused on materialism that I think for us it's difficult sometimes to uh, to put the material world aside because yeah. we accept things not being logical. But how is that how is it feeling in Hollywood? Because well yeah Hollywood again 
a lot of the right brain people moved to Hollywood because they want to be the star, the musician, the writer, the director. So it pulls you in. I honestly think Hollywood itself is right here because there's a big energy vortex right by the Hollywood sign, right in Griffith Park. And I think that's why Hollywood isn't 50 miles over here or 50 miles over there. It drew in. And it drew in besides the artists, the actors. It's right in between Hollywood and Burbank, the, the, the two entertainment capitals, which are touching. It also drew in the spiritual, the religious. We have just in my neighborhood where I live in the hills, we have a monastery, we have Vedanta, we have Theosophy, we have Thelemic, we have like every form of spirituality right here too, whether monasteries or temples or churches. It, it's the same thing. In combination actually, the, the, like the people who are drawn to Hollywood, they also, they have a, I think most people have a, a big fascination for for a theater as well and entertainment and storytelling and i think it's a really interesting combination the paranormal or the spirituality because there's so many similarities yeah again i think we're stepping into the same world the world beyond reason the world beyond like in the witchy world you have this side of your vessel this is where you pay rent and bills and you have to show up on time in this side anything can happen in this side, magic exists. In this side, and that's where the artists have to live while creating art, and that's where we have the spiritual. But but you're right. Our Western societies, Europe, U.S., so developed, modern, we're as a whole, we're just not a mystical world. We're a materialistic world. We're not. We even our religion doesn't have very much mysticism. Where some Eastern cultures do, and some other cultures, Middle Eastern cultures, and some. Uh, more shamanic cultures, but we, we're, we're leaning towards it. I believe this part of this whole shift is that we're waking that up because we're, we are we have to look at it. You know, some people aren't, of course, and some people are. But, yeah, we just lost the mysticism. We lost the magic. Would you say that it's your mission to have people focus more on, on these other realms? Well, my mission, whether they focus on these other realms or not, I think it's a wonderful world and it's a pretty flat and boring world without art or mysticism or ghosts or spirits or fairies. But but my real goal, I think, is is about empowering people, not me, empower, them pulling their power back. Because I, I, I say this often, working with people over the decades, people give away their power. We are amazing beings. They give away their power to other people. They give away their power to controlling belief systems. They give away their power to fear all the time. And um, it's just like the tiny flip of the switch or tiny change of perception, and you pull that power back. Art helps you do that. Whether you're at a museum looking at art, whether you're at dance, whether you're at theater, whether you're listening to music, or whether you're on a paranormal investigation. It's going into the possibility, the realm where there's no limit. That's yeah. where the magic is. So do you think that art or spirituality can actually make this space? Do you think it can? I do. I, I do. I think it makes us better people. I think it makes... It makes us wholer people. Just here's a baby example. My local elementary school in Hollywood, nobody sent their kids there because they were horrible. They, they, it was the lowest 10 percentile of school, so people struggled and sent them to private schools, and it was terrible. We brought in art programs. I thought Hollywood Arts Council, that's what we do. We brought in theater and dance and photography and fine art. Their math skills went up. Their English and writing skills went up. All of their skills went up because they had art. It yeah. opens. Yeah, I think it should be much more important in, in like children's education. Yeah. Because it, it, it opens up the, the, the hope part of us, the possibility part, the magic part of us, the creative part of us. You know, all, all the good stuff happens over here. <laughs> Human part, definitely. Yeah. So, um, there was one thing we wanted to ask you. Uh, Anything. You, you've, been, you've been on uh, many, many reality shows, actually, like Ghost Adventures, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, me and people, we've noticed 
that actually on these on these uh, paranormal investigation television show um they they are still very afraid of, of the paranormal like fear is a very strong re reaction and we were actually we were a little bit how, how do you what's the word like a skeptic little bit, yeah. a little bit skeptic about that because if this is something that you expose yourself to on a daily basis why is fear not a method so i really wanted to ask you like how do you um how can I like I'm I'm not the English one, so sometimes I need help. From no, doing good. You guys are amazing. Um, are you your feelings? How do you? Yeah, how do you uh, use use your feelings as an instrument? Also, yeah. like if you if, yeah. if you go into a, a place and and you can sense that there's a lot of unrest or something like this in the environment, how is your immediate reaction always to be scared? I mean, if, if you're going in, like, you know this is going to be a situation, you've had experience, and, and we have a, a really hard time, I mean, I mean, this is like an existential kind of thing, of course, you're always going to be thinking of, of your mortality. Yeah, and, well, um, I, I, think, I think it's two things. One, there's that shock value. Even if you're in a bright house and somebody walks around the corner and you startle them, that has nothing to do with paranormal or ghosts. The, the, uh, and number two, the unknown frightens us. The un what we don't know frightens us. We're drawn to it. We're, I've, I've always known, I firmly believe that this is our realm of existence. And I have since I was a little toddler kid. So the, I haven't had the big fear of the other side. I've always talked to spirits. I know that there's way more good ones than bad ones. Just like humans, there's way more good ones than bad ones. And one bad apple doesn't spoil the whole thing. So my fear, I, again, when I, I just going on an investigation, going on, I, it's not fear from that, unless somebody boom, startled me. Unless you're walking into some place that's very, very dark. And most of the TV shows, they're not going to send you into, like in Hollywood, we have really fun ghosts at the Hollywood Roosevelt, at the American Legion, at the Hollywood Athletic Club. We're ghosts hang out not because they were hung or they were killed by a serial killer or the insane asylum. They partied there. They played there. They were artists there. That's why theaters are so haunted. The ghosts come back not because they were tortured, because it was the place where they lived. Yeah. But you're not going to get that on a TV show. And reality shows don't care about the happy ghost, the good ghost, grandma ghost. They want to send you into something dark and whatever. So the fear is there because you're... Why do you think that is? It's TV. I mean, because people, they probably tested it. People, I mean, I personally think different. If they gave me a TV show, yes, you would have to have the shock value, but I would have the positive side of it. I would have the spirits talking and getting real information and getting real stuff. So, but, but as for now, what's on TV? Murder mysteries, crime dramas. It's just our human, we're, we're drawn to it. We're, 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 Funky little people. We have a lot of idiosyncrasies. Do we ever have like a an honest, an honest um, view on on what the afterlife, what the other realm is about? If our culture or our fascinations, our enter entertainment uh, lust is so is so dominant in this, how can we ever have a an honest conversation with the spiritual world? Well, I mean, I think that's up to us on an individual level. I mean, you might get drawn into it by a TV show, good or bad, or from a horror film to a... And there is some good ones out there. There is some positive ones out there. Even some of the dramatic ones back the show. There was a couple ghosty shows that were actually positive, or medium shows that were positive. Um, but I think then it's, it's the door has been opened, or the awareness has been opened, and then it's an inner journey. Then it's an inner journey that you figure out what to develop your gift, or is it spirituality, or is it just that thing? It, it's you. You have to step in once the door is open, and maybe that's what this big pandemic partly is what it's about. We're stuck in there with ourselves. That's a very interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to make the connection back to 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 art and the paranormal that. We have this concern that with these with these uh, ghost shows that we see how important the narrative is actually 
like like you said that there's it, there's also a lot of positivity in, in in spirituality and in the paranormal and since the entertainment industry is so focused on fear and on trauma that it almost seems like the narrative is is influencing our yeah. our view on on the spiritual side as being a bad thing so how do you think that narrative and how, how how important is this to you like how do you well it, it's it is really important again and you do the best you have with what you're given and i must say some shows are starting to get it even ghost adventures which yeah that's a big four macho guys going in but he's exactly. learned over the last year he's learned over 10 years number one show i've done i think 10 episodes with them and not the last one but the one before for the very first time again they're going to go to the scary that zach loves that and that gets ratings but the last time the time before a show in, in scottsdale arizona zach actually said after lockdown will you come back and clear the house spiritually clear the house on camera that's the first time he's ever done anything like that and and so you can see you don't have if there is negative stuff you don't have to live with it you don't have to be slave to it he's working more and more with like bishop brian ulet the, the, the catholic priest exorcist bringing resolution in and answers to so it's a huge step in the right direction i just like really i get to clear a house i mean i've cleared many way after the fact or we've done some beautiful positive things on camera that never show up edited out because there's a style to the show and i guess it's a style to the show that they create by what the demand is by us feeling evil. so we need more art more art to broaden that view okay <laughs> so keep going girls I like that you say that because we were also wondering now that we we're also talking about these ghost adventures and uh, uh, go ghost investigation shows like we are also, and I think you don't really uh, use uh, like uh, t technique. Like you don't really use uh, uh, machines or computers or radars or whatever to 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 uh, like. And we are also saying like, wouldn't a poet actually, or or an artist, or a, or a painter, wouldn't that actually be the best channel, the best medium? To communicate with with the, with the other realm. Well, I think so. I mean, I'm very old school. Like my seances, we gather around the table, and it looks like it's a hundred years ago. You know, I maybe have a spirit board, a Ouija board, and a candle, and some herbs and some incense. Uh, but I mean, I see a place for some of the technology. I'm not a, again. I'm, I'm amazing. I signed up here. But what the technology gives, and it's not what's driving it, it gives confirmation. And people who don't have the gift or don't want to open up their gift, because I think everyone has it, it just got taught out of us in these non-mystical Western societies. But people who, who don't have that or want to give it, it gives them a little box or a little thing, or you could hear the spirit talk. And again, I never had tech, and once I started working on it, the, the kind of nice confirmation I got is that I would be there going, okay, there's this thing going like this on your head, and I see it, and I feel it. And for the first time ever, there's somebody in another room, simultaneously, not aware of each other, has a machine that shows the little thing going like this on the head. So that's like a confirmation to whether it's all the people out there who, who don't haven't been able to see yet so it has its place i just don't think just like in art you take an art class and the kid might start with paint by numbers put red here but then you take it to your own art yeah yeah i feel like with with the technology it it, it feels a little bit too much for me but this is this is my my personal opinion that they are asking the wrong questions that they are after all the time and this is, this is for me, like, if, if you just want to, this is where you're after, where you just want to prove that it's real, then I, I, don't, I don't know how, how much answers you're going to get. I don't know. It, there's no, I don't think there's a complete answer to it. I don't, you know, it, it's a dance. That dance, art, it's a dance between technology and intuitive. It's a dance between you know, left brain logic, what it takes to make a successful TV show or book, and the, the warming of the heart, the opening up. It, it's it's a dance. Yes, the dance. How do we call it? The dance macabre. Yeah. 
I love that. You guys are fabulous, by the way. Thank you for having me on. You guys just, I'm like, yeah, go speak. <laughs> so, Patty, do you have any big projects coming up? Any, any night? Um, I, I, my, my podcast, which I'd love to have you guys on, uh, it's called the witching, the witching hour. Yeah, I've only aired like five episodes so far, but I've got like 12 in the can. Um, I'm really happy with that. I'm bringing on amazing people. Guys, I hope I've had a lot of the people from ghost adventures on. I've had leaders in spirituality and, and, and outside things of all sorts of places. So I'm really excited with that because we are still shut down. Hollywood is still shut down. It's a ghost town. Um, yep. You know, even all the TV, show, TV shows are shot from their house. They're at their house, and you're at your house. And they're... I was getting ready to do a project with Trevor Moore on Comedy Central, um, the Trevor Moore show again, which I love because, again, it's a whole different audience. It's a comedy thing. I'm still me giving my message, um, but, again, to a whole different world, which I love about a lot of the TV. But that, and then I've been contemplating starting another book. My first book's going so good, but that's that might take uh, some more lockout. Wow, yes, speaking of books, actually, speaking of that, because we have, uh, we know who our biggest influencers are, like Paranormal, like we have Love and and then we leave by, and uh, we were all wondering, like, who is your, do you have, like, a big example, or, or someone you really well, my I have amazing teachers in in a million different philosophies that I have studied my whole life. They're not I've been in school for decades. Um, and and if I don't know something, I'll learn it. I don't know New Age crystal. I'll take that. I'll learn Peruvian shamanism. I need traditional British witchcraft. I'll study with Rick Cat. I need this. I'll study with South Central. I need this. Forever, I had a teacher, George Derby. In creating my book, and I met him once, and I worked with him once, and he died ever ago in creating my book i must say scott cunningham he was an early wicca writer he uh, wrote herbs and oils and basic very like very 1980s stuff but what i would i started out again 30 years ago i would buy these big fancy books and they'd be overwhelming and i'd stick them on the shelf and not look at them but they'd look good i would buy a scott cunningham book and it'd be little and easy to read and big pictures and I would devour it and I would learn and I would use it. It would be all. And that's exactly what I styled mine app, Old World Magic for the Modern World. I wanted it to be a modern version, not his information, not his stuff, but my version of how I would teach mine. So I literally, once I wrote it, I spent as much time unwriting it going, I need to lose half the work. I need to lose half the information. Just keep it simple and pure. So it, it's done really well because of that. I like so. to focus too much on, it's like the theory. Yeah. And then they just, like, what? I just go, turn left here. Not, when you finish. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What about that yeah. one? Ah, there was so many things. There's so we we wrote questions down. It's it's. Look at that a lot. It's all over the place. Sybil, do you have do you have like a, a question? Yeah, have you ever been to Europe, Patty? I have been to France and I loved it. And that's it. I've been to France twice. One was really short, and one was an amazing trip with my best friend. One of my best friends for his birthday, and we did no amazing things so we were really lucky i've been to greece and that's it i need to get to europe i'm so drawn to it because america is too darn new you know for us we're just too new we don't have anything 200 years old 300 years old a thousand years old and that's what i fell in love in, in france we stayed in a castle from the year 1200 you know there wasn't even america it's 1200 so I, I definitely, uh, I'll hit you guys up when I get over your way. <laughs> my my apartment is from the 1600s. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So have you. Yeah. I, so awesome. Have you guys been to the U.S.? Yeah, I'm American. She is American. Oh, I, oh yeah. I met her once, and it was like the first time I came to the United States, but it was like a huge experience. I want to I go back as soon as this down this, this terrible pandemic is over i really need to go back to the united states 
Yes. Yeah. The travel is brilliant. Talk about in expanding your your view of the world. Travel and art. Art and travel. <laughs> Yes, yeah. it's really interesting. Also, like how I felt because I, I'm, I'm European and I, I know how it feels. This is normal for me. But but the energy in in just this different continent, it's so different because of this 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 entirely different history and being much younger. It's really interesting. You can feel that it's almost in the soil or something. Yes. Every I noticed that, and, and, and you guys are really sensitive. You will notice. Going places, even again, I I I felt it in France, you know, in Europe, in Greece, where the, there was that history there, and, and we felt it in the land. I've been to Australia, which is all even newer than America, but I felt the magic from their indigenous people from from that. Even in just in America, I see why places are where they are. Um, like I remember going to mining towns like we do a lot of the paracon the paranormal conventions Virginia city nevada city vulture city which are all cowboys but they're built around mining towns and i think that the gold and the copper and the silver increases paranormal activity and like i said there's a vortex here in hollywood and it drew in the artists. I think every place, whether you're in the desert, the city, Europe, the U.S., South America, it has its own life force. Oh, interesting. You think that, like the actual, the actual soil, the the like the the the, the gold, it, it increases the activity. Yes, definitely. When I flew into Butte, Montana, a couple years ago, they brought me in to see why there was so much chaos there. And they literally were had such a high suicide rate, um, like the suicide capital, I mean, a bad title. And the second I got off the plane, I saw it. I felt the vibration of the, they were right in between mountains at the Continental Divide. They had been a mining town forever. There were 10,000 miles of tunnels under the city. They were, then they took up pit mining and there was a big toxic pit. But the gold and silver, it made everything hot, bigger. The happy people were the happiest people you've ever seen. The depressed people were the most depressed people. Everything was heightened. Like in a, you were in a bowl. You were in an energy bowl. Wouldn't you think that it's more like the human relationship to, to, the, to, these, to these materials is, is what, what triggers it? Because we have I think this I, relation, relation with gold, for example. I think part part I think it's both. I definitively yes. Our we are so part of this nature. That's why we're affected by moon cycles. That's why we're affected by planets. That's why we're affected by weather. And we are also affected by the land. So I think it's it's completely both. It, that's a good point that the gold that we are being vibrated by the gold in the mountains underneath us. Um, and then the land, I believe, has a spirit of its own. Every mineral, every plant, every tree, because I'm very elemental in my magical work, you know, it all has, you know, wait, there's a spirit in this little crystal right here. It's got its own spirit. Hmm. Yeah, but like for me, so it, just, it feels so human most of the time, this, this, this spiritual realm, but maybe it's just because that's the, that's the only frequency I pick up, but it feels forces. It just it just says something about us about. Um, well, that makes sense because we're us. You are human, or at least half human. I believe we're kind of like these half races, but but this is our. This is what we know. This is the vessel. So that's how else do we look at it? So I, I think you're right, but I think both are, are, are true. We are the conduit, just like the gold in the mountains is the conduit. It's going to affect our physical body. But yeah. we're also standing on this earth that's got its own vibration. Just like you go outside and it's 20 degrees below zero, you're going to feel cold, your human self. It's you're 120, I'm talking the wrong Fahrenheit, centigrade, but, you got, but you're going to feel the difference. Yes. From our human point of view, and but we are affected by that outside. Yeah. I also think that's why we're a little bit obsessed with technology too. Is we always need a conduit, whether it's a human or a thing that we build, and that's also 
funny with all of these technological devices is because they also contain all those materials also. So they do. Uh, and and, power to, to give us and including, yeah, they have this stuff. Like there's a quartz crystal in your watch. There's there's all that stuff, and they have the wires. And electricity is the biggest conduit out there. Yes. You know that's why why you know white flash in a haunted house. TVs turn on and off. That's why they developed all the ghost meters and ghost radars and all those ghost boxes. Electricity in itself, no matter what technology they put into it, electricity is conduit. Yeah, electricity is running it. And I think that we're also starting to take a little bit of a of a fork in that because it takes electricity to run all of these devices. But we think that like that's a really Victorian kind of thing, is, is that electricity informs spiritual principles. And we think with our time that it's it's information that's starting to run yes, these yeah. kinds of principles. That that's what lifts the veil. The the thing that you can find information on the other side. And if you just have the device to ask it, you have all the knowledge you need. But it's just about what kind of uh, glasses you're wearing. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the template, it's the brain. It's with, you know, there's a lot, to, however you get the information, even to me, even going into spirituality, religion, and belief system, it's, you're going to do it within your frame, either a frame you know or a frame you take on or create, you know. Uh, you're going to see the monster, in a sense, how the way you picture and imagine monsters, because that's how your brain works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's also the idea with ghosts is that every century we've had a different perspective of what a ghost is. Yeah. It's the same because it's also a reflection of what we think about the afterlife. Yeah. Completely. And Western culture to Eastern culture. I mean, we do completely different things with our ghosts. They feed them yeah. and, and we're, we're afraid of revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, so with that would like now now we're talking about like the the the, meta, the ghost as a metaphor and how it's how it's um infected by by like the cultural the cultural how do you say the base the cultural foundation yeah. of the metaphor um it seems like um there's not really something universal to be said about this how how what how do you, what what are your thoughts? On that, do you, do you think that there's like a universal, universal approach to the paranormal? For example, yeah. there's like here in like for us, we are we are white, West European, and then American, also like Christian based culture, and we believe in good <laughs> people because that's that's that, that's what the Bible is is telling us. Uh, but do you think that there's like a global universal thing to be said about them? Like, the um, I, I think there's a, if you get into it, there is some universal truth mm -hmm. to what be a universal thing. I don't know if you have to get to it the same way or if we ever will or if it even matters. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, I don't know if it matters. You know, if, if you want to get from here, you can get from my house and get to your house. There's lots of ways to do it. Is one better than the other? You can take a plane, you can take a boat, walk. You could, you know, you know, just psychically get there. there but is one more better? Because somebody won't fly, they should take a boat, you know. Somebody's afraid of flying. So I don't know. That's a great question. You guys have great questions. <laughs> I guess did, that, answer, did I answer it? Did I give you my answer? <laughs> I twist things. Plurality. Everything is plural. Even yeah. Yeah. if you think about the universe now, everything is plural. There's plurality. There's multiple ways to the same place, I guess. Yeah, and I do believe, in, as I do seriously believe, the veil is lifting between our world and the next world. And there's more and more unexplainable to the logical mind stuff. It's because we, as we do, slowly move into that age of Aquarius in the next 100 years. It's a different world. It's not our parents' world of black and white, right and wrong, yes and no, solid ground. It's like this. There is no solid. So it, 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 things are changing. There is no constant. 
And what I do love about technology and science is that tech, science and spirituality are coming together. They're coming with we're getting into quantum mechanics and quantum physics and stuff. It's like science is proving spirituality, even like a little ghost box, but getting bigger than that into the God gene, the this and the that. So it's they just discovered that I haven't even read enough about it to speak on it, so I shouldn't. But they somebody just discovered a parallel universe that works backwards, that works that time moves backwards. This is science discovered that. I've been seeing that since I was a little kid. I always say it's a mirror image. It's a reverse. Last night I did a, a dumb supper. I did a silent supper. I go, you have to do it backwards. We did dessert and then the main course. Spirituality, that's been a part of it in every culture, in every religion forever. But now science is proving it. That's wild. It's this backwards thing that you're talking about. We also, we, we were watching uh, like a, a seance you, you did. And you were also saying, "Oh yeah, I I didn't uh, tell you yet." But, uh, in the other in the other realm, things are backwards. So is this is this one of your own discoveries, or is this or is this like yes and yes? I, again, I I was kind of born with this knowing. I my first dance, I was seven or eight. I hadn't studied anything, and I just kind of knew stuff. It's in the blood. And again, I've studied my whole life. People who are just too organic. And don't study, you can get off track. I so I do both. I have the inner knowing, I've experienced it since I've been doing seance my whole life. And I did and I being able to see through it, I see the mirror image. So yes, I have been saying that for decades and decades. And then this week science said yes. <laughs> because this is really fascinating to me, because for me, like this symbol of a mirror is just coming back and back into my life. It's yeah. just It's just something that, just like the ghost, or uh, like now, these are really, 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 really like an interesting symbol. But the the mirror just keeps coming back as a symbol to to something. Spirituality, also. Yeah, seeing your yes. Yeah, if there's many, many messages within it, figure out what all yours are, plus it is a portal, plus it is a power source. It's been used forever, even before we had mirror mirrors, it was the reflection on the lake. It was, it's it's the pathway between the worlds. It's a yeah. portal. So how, how this back, this back, this um, uh, mirror, how far does it go? Is, is it, is it, um... Like, does it go all the way through? So is it also like time, like you were mentioning the time goes backwards? Well, it, 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 I, in my experience and things I've read both, I don't, the way we see time and space doesn't exist on the other side. Even though we say backwards, it's more reflection because if they don't have that same sense of time, but it, that's just really hard for our little human brain because we are so time oriented to go, Yeah. Ah, no time. But so, in a sense, yes, what you're saying. If there's no time and space, you're there. You're here. But then again, I think like narrating and storytelling again can 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 do can do something for this because also in the way that we take our uh, our stories that we how we watch movies how we like entertainment it's always extremely linear like the story has a beginning yeah. and then there's a hero and then he does things. And then there's an ending, and yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with this <laughs> this way of storytelling because it gives us just such a such a narrow-minded you know, world view, basically. That you're saying now, that in the we we created time like this, this that there's yeah. some the beginning and then like why why are we feeding this thought while there's just so many other ways of looking at it? Because. Because, again, we have to look at the general mass, and they don't know the other ways of looking at it. And if this is what you're born into, it's just a measurement. We just need measurements. Money is energy measurement. Time is an energy measurement. Things are energy measurement. And and we get lost without some form of, uh, of direction, of, of framing. So it's a framing. But I think you're right. So that's where the artist comes in. So we go full circle. Artists don't have to be linear. Whether it's a storytelling artist, yes, the norm goes there. But there's a you don't have to. Have to. The fine artist, the dance artist. So we can get out of those.
confines of what we just is normal. Normal isn't so. For you, John, being in the center of it all, like being in Hollywood, cannot you cannot you cannot you do something? <laughs> <laughs> The, the movie directors in Hollywood to tell different stories. Stop making Messiah in the case, please. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess everybody can do what they can do. I do what I do. Again, the little victories along the way, the little push it open, push it open. Somebody's afraid to throw open the door, but if you can have a little glimmer of light come in, a little different, wow, that story ended differently. It, it ended at the beginning, and that's true happened throughout time there there's been movies like that and tv shows and more and more again as the shift happens in the linear world the black and white world is getting mushy i think it's going to be more and more and some of the new even plain old tv cable shows and stuff are are breaking those they're starting to break those reality at least our set reality Yes, and this is also why we are very interested in this in this uh, in this this reality. Of Jean. I yeah. always Jean. she always she always makes fun of me when I say Jean, uh, <laughs> because it's a different narrative. But we also we also re notice that there it's really frowned upon. Actually, this reality television it's really frowned upon, and especially reality, yeah. especially in the art the art world, it's considered to be to be art. Actually, so how how do you, how how do you feel about it? Because people are afraid of something new. I mean, a lot of reality TV is really bad. A lot of it is take takes us to our lowest common denominator. I'm not talking paranormal or anything yes or no. I'm just talking sometimes it's a view and an overblown, exaggerated view of again the worst of humanity. The ghost shows have to show the scary ghosts, not the happy ghosts. The couples fighting have to be the worst and lowest denominator. So that's why reality gets a, a bad name because so much of it does take the low road, but it doesn't have to, and there's things taking the high road. And again, I have faith that we're gonna we're waking up to that. People are going, I'm gonna get bored with a couple fighting and getting drunk and let's do something different. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Should we do one final question? Yeah. How sure. your, uh, how's your time, Patty? I'm fine. You guys are great. <laughs> we're in the middle of a three-day holiday and we're stuck in our house. Not much to do. What we time? What time? Day. What time is it there, actually? No. It is here. It is uh, quarter to one in the afternoon in, in Los Angeles and Hollywood. We are now at, what is it, 10? Yeah, almost. 10. 10 in the evening. Big question. Uh, okay. Do you believe in haunted cemeteries? Ah, good one. I, well, yeah. I, I mean, they're not all what people think they are. There's not fear there. But, and ghosts aren't stuck there, in my experience. It's not like you're sitting there, a poor guy is in a six foot area. No. But we have given it energy. We have given it energy. And if enough people go through there with flashlights in fear, you're going to create, again, you can, you can call in, you can create spirit yourself. Not everything is a ghost. We create egregores, servitor. we create spirits all the time, like what a poltergeist. But they're, yes, so, no, it's just not going in. We're going to see some big old demons jumping out. No. But there, in Hollywood, we have an amazing cemetery. It's called uh, it's called Hollywood Forever. It was a old. It was started with the beginning of Hollywood. Movie old movie stars, big silent stars are buried there. Rock stars, and then it fell into disarray. I don't know, maybe the nineteen eighties or something. And it was it was practically derelict. And then whoever bought it, I don't know, maybe ten years ago, they fixed it up and they made it such a place of love and creativity. The ghosts are so happy there. I get this like hanging out at the fun hotel. They have all summer long, they have movies on the lawn. So 3,000 people go and sit on the grassy areas with these beautiful dead people. The dead people are so happy. <laughs> Again, they are not stuck there. They are not laying there in their grave. But it's like if they're going, hey, look at where they laid us to rest. There's a party going on. There's concerts. There's a Masonic Lodge. It's a place of life and celebrating life. And therefore, the life of these people, not just the death of these people. 
this is actually I'm, I'm 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 very happy about your answer because we have also been talking about like why we do home grain that's like the last place that you would want to be after you after you die because like why would you why would you leave your your physical body to be stuck in the physical like it <laughs> but now that you're saying like i think i also think that grave uh, cemeteries and these places of worship they are for the living it's a place it's yeah. place for, for the living and if, if you make it a nice place then maybe it, it invites but yeah. Right, to make you feel good about yourself. You want to go put some flowers and visit grandma, show her you did it. You know, I I personally believe you could just do it sitting right here, you know. <laughs> She's not there, but if that makes you feel better, she'll still come visit you there. But I think that's the connection to materiality if you are there with with the objects. And I think I think capitalists are very magical thinkers because yes, if a story has an objects that makes it important that makes it valuable and i think it's a, it's a lot to do also with art context that you only consider something art if it has an intriguing or interesting story you walk into the gallery and the painter was going through this and he created this sculpture when he was oh, and yeah. you're like wow yeah it's a really good piece of art and it's the <laughs> same thing with a haunted object or a haunted place there has to be a story or there's no value exactly for storytellers. Yeah. So story this tellers. is why our our definition of of haunted actually is historically charged with meaning. Do, do you do you I have love a that. definition for yourself of what haunted is? No, but I'll have to come up with one. Haunted? I love yours. I might borrow that. Uh because it is a historically charged. <laughs> no, I will, I will give you full credit. Um I I love that because that is what it is. Ooh, this old church where this happened. That's why you go to the insane asylum where people were mistreated. That's why I like to go to the happy party place that people had a good time. But it is it's the it's the history, it's the energy, it's the story, and it's so much the story. It's the art. Yes. Which is so I'll have to work on my definition though. What is haunted? Oh. Well we can talk about that on your podcast maybe. <laughs> It's a deal. It's a good, yes, yes. We will talk about it on my podcast. So this will probably be a, no, it won't be too weird of an hour. I've taped exactly at this hour on Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific. So that's like when we started now. So that'll work. Perfect. Okay, we'll talk later and I'll give you a date. I would be honored to have you guys. We have so much to talk about. <laughs> we have so much more questions, but maybe it's now. Endless. What's that? We've lost it. They're back. Okay. The spirits were speaking. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Oh. Thank you both for having me on. It was an honor. Keep up the amazing work. You girls are beautiful and creative. And I will see you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Share this. Tag me or whatever. And I'm going to share it too. You guys, good questions. Good hostesses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. See you, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Come to Hollywood. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yes.